Hey everyone, thank you so much uh, for joining our talk. It's called Audit Like a Pro, and this is how you are going to secure your Nougat packages. Now, my name is John Douglas. Uh, I'm a PM on the Nougat team, and I'm joined by my friend Andy. Andy, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Andy Sivkovic. Uh, I'm an engineer on the Nougat team, uh, and I actually implemented many of the Nougat audit features we'll see today. Awesome. Uh, so before we dive into those features, uh, I just want to like talk about the problem that we're trying to solve here. Uh, it seems like there's an elephant in the room that software supply chain attacks are on the rise. We're seeing all these different headlines about different packages with malware, known vulnerabilities, and different types of attacks. Um, is there anything that you're seeing in your local area on this type of topic? Yeah, uh, in the last month, uh, I saw a headline that a small restaurant chain here in Australia uh, got hacked recently and um, they had to close down for a while uh, while they got their computer systems back up and running. So you don't have to be a big target um, to get hacked. So uh, it, it kind of seems like, you know, these malicious packages are just continuing to be discovered and new vulnerabilities are happening every single day. Um, and gosh, it looks like what two times all previous years combined since 2019 that we're seeing these vulnerabilities. Okay. So vulnerabilities are a thing. Uh, what do we do about it? Let's, let's, let's dive into it. So, uh, Contoso, uh, imagine we're a Contoso, uh, we're going to dive into vulnerabilities with a new solution. Uh, you want to walk me through how we can do this on the command line and then maybe we'll dive into visual studio. Sure. Um, now all you have to do is run a restore, so .NET restore, and as long as NuGet can download a vulnerability database, which is something we'll talk about later on, you'll see these warnings. Okay, so these warnings tell me a lot of things. It tells me there's different codes for, I'm guessing, the severity. There's a package uh, ID that I can see which one's affected, the version, uh, the severity of the vulnerability. And also, it looks like I can click this. Um, is there anything in here that I should uh, kind of be interested in? I think that the patched versions is the most important part here. Uh, Restore doesn't show you what the patched versions are. Uh, we don't technically have uh, that information, um, but um, we, as we can see that each of these two packages have three different patched versions. Um, mm -hmm. You need to make a decision on which version is most appropriate for you. In many cases, I hope that you can just upgrade to the highest version, but there may be situations where you want to stay on a version five or version six rather than upgrading all the way to the version seven package. Okay, so uh, you're telling me I can just patch my version. So let's let's like, uh, how do I first off? How do I know if this package is like a top level versus an indirect or a transitive level? Yeah, that's a good question, and that will uh, change how you need to react to some of these uh, warnings. Uh, so you can use .NET NuGet Y provided the package name, and it'll show you a little graph um, of how the package is being used by the project. Okay, so I can do like identity model .jwt, um, and it looks like, oh, I, did I, did, oh, I, put, I, I misspelled it. Let me put an S here, my bad. All right, so this is the graph. Um, you can see kind of like a tree view. You can see all the different versions. And so it's kind of far down. So does that mean it's indirect? That's right. Um, so we don't have a, we don't make it very clear which are projects and which are packages. But if you know your solution, we can see that, for example, right at the bottom, um, the test project is have got a reference to the contoso.widget.database project. But the database project itself references SQL client, which in turn uh, has some transitive dependencies. Okay, so uh, could I just try updating this package? Is that a solution here? Uh, that would actually be my recommendation. Uh, okay. How do we figure that out? How do we figure out what's uh, outdated? If you, uh, in order to have a look at what uh, packages have newer versions available, you can use the .NET list package command. Um, yeah. There's um, also, uh, yes, you, you provide a dash dash outdated uh, okay. to 
because there are different ways you can list packages. And in this case, we want to know which ones have newer versions. And if you want to find out about which transitive packages have newer versions, you can also use dash dash include transitive. Okay. So I can look at this and more or less see everything that, uh, top level require or was resolved and has a latest version available. So this says that there are potentially two packages that I could update and then all the transitives as well show what they're, what they were resolved at and also their latest. So how do we go back to this problem and, uh, know which one, which package to update? Uh, well, when we were looking at the, uh, graph shown by uh, .NET and you get Y, we determined that um, the Microsoft.data.sql client package is what our pro one of our projects is referencing directly. We can also use a .NET package search and then that okay. package name. So, so basically, you're saying that this package, this project has that package, and now we can go search for it. So that would be what was it? .NET package search search. Um, and the, you provide the package name. And if you would like to look at all the, the list of all versions of that package that's available, mm -hmm. um, you also include the dash dash exact dash match option. Okay. So we want to look at Microsoft.data.sql client, I believe. Right. Yes. Okay. And so we can. Okay, so there's all these new versions. So I'm guessing that this is the latest version and we were on an older version. Okay, so I could just update the package and call it a day? Um, you, uh, you can either edit the, your project file in a text editor or you can use the .NET add package command. Then you run restore again and see whether those transitive vulnerabilities disappear. Okay, so uh, sounds like we got the CLI side like all covered. Uh, let's try to do this on Visual Studio. The same thing. I want to walk through it. I want to see it. Um, I want to see the same tooling. So let's dive into Visual Studio. All right. Okay, so walk me through this, Andy. What am I seeing here? So when you open uh, most uh, .NET projects or solutions these days, um, it'll run restore automatically, and we can see in the error list um, that all of those restore warnings are already there. Okay. In addition, there, uh -huh. uh, in addition, at the top of uh, Solution Explorer, we see a yellow bar saying that the solution contains packages with vulnerabilities, and you can click on that Manage NuGet Packages button, and it will open the Solution Level uh, Package Manager. Okay. So uh, I see a lot of different things. Like uh, I see you have vulnerable packages. I see another one that says this one has a vulnerability. This one looks like it has an update available. That was the one that we were trying to update. Um, That's right. Let's fix this. How do we like go through and the motions and fix the problems that we have in our error list? Sure. Um, so since we previously identified that SQL client has um, transitive vulnerabilities and that's a package we would like to try to update, if you click on that Microsoft.dub.sql client, we can see on the right-hand side that the list tells you which projects have that use this package as a top level package and which ones are transitive. Um, since the transitive ones automatically get it from the uh, project that uses it as a top level, you can select that top level project. Okay. Uh, and in the version list, um, click the drop down to see the list. It'll show you, um, yes, update to the newer version. Okay. You can click that install button. Uh, and after NuGet has um, updated and restored all the projects, uh, we can uh, refresh this list. And we'll see uh, if you hover again over the warning icon next to the installed tab at the top of PMUI. Previously, it was telling us that we had six vulnerabilities. Now there's only two. Okay, so I still have two vulnerabilities. I, I want to fix those. So sure. this one's saying, uh, what, extensions caching memory 8.0 has a known vulnerability. Okay, well, this one looks pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a top-level package. It has a vulnerability. It's installed top-level, um, but there is a new version. So could we just update this version? That's right. 
uh, package manager does remember which projects you previously had selected. So remember to unselect other projects that don't have the uh, package installed and then go through the same flow. You select a newer version um, and then upgrade. Okay, so I'll just upgrade this top level package for this project to go through the same motions, refresh, and wow, I am clean. That's awesome. Okay, so let's let's dive back into our uh, presentation real quick and um, kind of go through what we just saw. Um, Andy, walk me through the features that we just saw. Sure. Um, so we can see that now .NET Restore um, will show you um, packages with known vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. It requires Restore to be able to download a vulnerability database, which NuGet.org can provide. But if you're not using NuGet.org as a package source, you can use a new feature called Audit Sources um, in order to use NuGet.org only as a vulnerability uh, database source. Okay, so uh, by default, we now audit all dependencies, including top level, indirect. You have new functionality so that you can even suppress advisories. We didn't cover that, but you can do that, right? That's right. If, uh, if you are willing to take the risk, um, make sure that you do an analysis to make sure that you're not using any packages uh, in a vulnerable way, uh, but that is an option. And then last but not least, you said I can use NuGet.org as my database, basically, for uh, known vulnerabilities by just using audit sources. That's really cool. That's fun. Okay, so what about transitive dependencies? We just walked through those. Um, we have made some significant improvements to the package manager UI in Visual Studio. Uh, for a few versions, we were showing transitive packages uh, at on a per projects level package manager UI. Now we're showing at the solution level as well, which makes this all a lot easier. Um, the uh, the the project list on the right hand side when you select a package, it'll tell you which um, which projects have the use the package as a top level package and which ones are transitive. Um, and um, the uh, show only vulnerable uh, filter also works uh, with both the top level and transitive packages. And what what release is this uh, um, for? Like, can I do it? Get it today? What? This will be. Uh, this is available in uh, Visual Studio 2022 version 17.12, which is available when as uh, as soon as .NET Conf is on. Okay, so we also have .NET Nougat Y, and that was the tree view that you showed me, uh, where I can see if it's an indirect, a top level, and just really know where my dependencies, like how they're being used. Um, is there anything else in Visual Studio that's kind of equivalent here? Uh, yeah, so .NET NuGet Y is a, a new feature to the .NET SDK, uh, mm -hmm. but in Visual Studio, uh, you can use the Solution Explorer to get similar information. Um, you need to remember to enable to um, include external files in Visual Studio's um, Solution Explorer, and then you can search for packages just the same, and it'll show you, uh, you'll be able to visually see the same type of graph to understand whether packages are coming, uh, which top level packages have caused a package to be included when it's coming through a project reference as well. Okay, so let's let's talk about the key takeaways. Um, it sounds like we want to constantly be auditing. Um, we want to understand our dependencies. Uh, we want to keep those dependencies up to date. Uh, we can use all these tools, the CLI, Visual Studio. Um, are there other tools, Andy, that like we could use potentially maybe in GitHub or anything like that? Uh, GitHub has Dependabot, which can uh, has a few different configuration options, but one of those is to alert you about um, packages with known vulnerabilities. Oh, that's awesome. And then uh, we just want to automate and monitor and update those dependencies when they just kind of come in. Okay, so if you publish packages, uh, particularly to NewGet.org, it's responsible if you can report your known security vulnerabilities uh, to GitHub's uh, advisory database. Uh, this is the right. package source that NewGet.org uh, uses, and when you report it here, it'll automatically flow through to um, your customers when they do a restore. 
okay, so I can go to this GitHub tab. I can go to the advisories. I can see that this .NET runtime repo has published different security advisories. And those ones are attached to NuGet packages. We already saw this kind of the same uh, flow here. And then those all go into the GitHub advisory database. And that's the source of all this, uh, all these advisories. That's right. It's automatically ingested by NuGet.org and becomes available uh, after some short duration. Okay, so uh, beyond that, let's let's talk about what's next then um, for for NuGet. So uh, supply by platform. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, well, there's really not much that developers need to know about because it'll just be silent behind the scenes. But right now, there are some packages that are part of the .NET platform, which mm -hmm. NuGet Audit will warn about. Once the high by platform is implemented, those packages will just disappear. Okay, so more or less the framework brings those packages and uh, they don't need to be marked vulnerable. Um, what about this automatic remediation? What is that? Sure. Um, so we saw earlier in this video that it can be a reasonable amount of work to detect whether a vulnerable package is a top-level package or if it's a transitive package and making decisions about uh, how to fix it and what versions to use. Uh, the goal for a automatic uh, tool uh, to make these decisions for you, upgrade your packages, and so you can just run one command uh, and that's it. So, so you're telling me that there is a single click or command, does it all for me, and it will just fix all of my security woes if possible. <laughs> uh, only those coming from uh, vulnerable packages. If you've got vulnerabilities in your own code, that's your responsibility still. Well, this this is a huge step forward. This is awesome. Well, thank you so much, Andy. You you showed me everything about audit. You showed me about knowing, preventing, fixing, what's next, and some of the best practices. I just want to say thank you. Uh, is there any last word that you have for our audience today? I want to thank everyone, especially who watched all the way through. Um, and if you use uh, any of these new get audit features and you have feedback for us, uh, please reach out to us on GitHub. Awesome. Thank you all so much. You have a wonderful day. Bye.